we must be humble we shouldn't be arrogant we must constantly encounter god's almightiness through the bible and we must realize how great the almighty god's love is furthermore we must surely recognize our impossible sinful nature for which we have no qualification nor existence to receive that love only then we can truly understand how great and precious is the grace of jesus christ who has connected us to god True sanctification is not to build up my strength and ability but it is to abandon myself it is to engrave again and again to understand how impossible we are that without God's grace we would not be able to live a single moment and to hide and take refuge in the truly holy God Jesus Christ therefore God's people who have recognized their true nature lived by constantly examining and guarding their lives in order to guard their hearts which they couldn't do alone they formed fellowships to fight together where they checked and encouraged one another at times rebuking each other the internal and unchanging word of god walking with god the bible that transcends time walking with god 40 sanctification one of the ongoing tasks that remains for christians who have received salvation through god's love and the grace of jesus christ is the aspect of sanctification generally sanctification refers to the process from justification in which the people of the lord who were called as god's children are called righteous to the merits of the cross of jesus christ to the ultimate state of glorification that will occur at the second coming of jesus christ where believers will be completely transformed and perfected if justification is seen as a singular event sanctification encompasses the journey from justification to glorification therefore when we say we have been saved it includes the process of justification sanctification and ultimately glorification but in general christians see this journey of sanctification literally as to become holy they believe that the longer they live in faith the more they become holy and go on to believe that only when they become so holy can they reach the stage of glorification however we need to delve into the bible to discover the true meaning of holiness as commanded by god if the true meaning of holiness as spoken by god in the bible is indeed literal holiness then we must employ all means and methods necessary to reach the position of holy sanctification it is because this is god's command however the sanctification spoken of in the bible is not the sanctification we think of now let's begin that paradoxical story be holy because i am holy god declared the israelites as my people and to lead the israelites into canaan he brought them out into the wilderness and proclaimed them to be holy i am the lord your god consecrate yourselves and be holy because i am holy do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves about on the ground I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy because I am holy. When God called Israel out of Egypt and led them through the wilderness and when he brought them into the land of Canaan, he was always the one in control. He did not seek the consent of the Israelites. God himself proclaimed and acted by himself. The part about holiness is also as such. God did not declare that the Israelites were holy or because they could be holy so God declared them to be holy it is not merely a matter of the spiritual level of God's people or whether they are capable or not or if they are able or unable to fulfill the proclaimed command they may not be able to but God will surely do it people who cannot be holy The major theme of the Bible is represented by the history of Israel. The beginning of Israel starts with Abraham, but through the life journey of Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, the journey of life is condensed and shown and through Jacob's changed name, Israel, the true nature of human beings has been amplified in more detail. In addition, God also commanded the Israelites to be holy and guided and carried out their 
history. Therefore, if the intention of God's command to be holy is to pursue moral holiness of life, then not only Jacob's life but also Israel's history should have gone down that holy path. As time passed, they had to become more mature and sanctified. However, the history of Israel went in the opposite direction. God sent Moses who was prepared and revealed the sinfulness of Pharaoh, who did not want to let go of God's people in Egypt, and through Moses destroyed the gods of Egypt and dried up the Red Sea. God was the one who allowed his people to cross in this manner, because there was a purpose and a reason. He did not give the Israelites the bread, wine, and alcohol that they wanted in the wilderness and instead gave them the food necessary to pass through the wilderness. During the 40 years that I led you through the desert, your clothes did not wear out nor did the sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. It was not because God lacked the strength or the ability to do so. In other words, it was not that he couldn't do it. He just did not do it. However, there is another thing God did not do in the Old Testament era. And that is, he did not act to take charge so that God's people, the Israelites, could live a holy life. It means that he did not govern them to live a morally holy life. Throughout the Old Testament, Israel rebelled and disobeyed, and from God's point of view, they lived a life that was impossible to achieve the holiness that God required. The Bible tells the story, As they had done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me. They have provoked me to anger from the day their forefathers came out of Egypt until this day. From the time your forefathers left Egypt until now, they did not listen to me. This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. The people of Israel and Judah have done nothing but evil in my sight from their youth. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day because of all their wickedness in Gilgal. Since the days of Gibeah, you have sinned, O Israel, and there you have remained. Why did God allow God's people, the Israelites, to live a rebellious life? If the holiness that God spoke of and commanded was a moral holiness, a holy life of ever-improving sanctification, wouldn't God Almighty change their lives? God can do it. God always fulfills what He wants done. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Therefore, it is not that God failed to achieve the sanctification of his people, the Israelites in the Old Testament, but he just did not do so. This is because the way to true sanctification was to expose their rebelliousness. The Perspective of Holiness Only the cross-sectional record of the Old Testament looks like God's failure. But there is one very important thing we need to know. Humans are confined to the time of history, but God transcends the time of history. God has already prepared the ending point and then started history. It is not that he started history and then moved toward a certain goal according to circumstances and adjusted it along the way. This is very important perspective. Thus, human history begins with creation, but God's history does not begin with creation. The Bible is the story of God, the only one to exist for eternity, creating a perfect nation and finding God's people who are worthy of that nation. Therefore, the disobedience and failure of the Israelites in the Old Testament history seem to have come to an end from the entire history of Israel, but it was just a process in God's history. When God told his people to be holy, the people of the generation of the Exodus who listened to the command ended up living an unholy life of unbelief and all died in the wilderness. That is why the Bible must be read and learned from cover to cover. The history of Israel starting with Abraham and including the people of Israel who appeared in the book of Revelation must be viewed as one story. The point at which Israel, God's people, will become holy is not at the end of Israel's history in 2 Kings, 
True holiness is revealed through the history of the filling of the Holy Spirit as the Holy God penetrates and dwells within the hearts of God's people, surpassing even the holy presence of Jesus Christ who came through the gospel. It is not through any effort and dedication of God's people, but when the very God who said, Be holy because I am holy, dwells in them, they can become holy people. The Bible is telling that story. The meaning of true sanctification Now, through the Bible, we have seen that the meaning of holiness represented by the meaning of sanctification is not the moral holiness of the world. No, to be more precise, it is not to go to God through the worldly concept of holiness. Rather, Jesus Christ, who is God, rebuked the Pharisees who returned to being law-abiding people after northern Israel fell to the Assyrian Empire and southern Judah fell to the Babylonian Empire. This is because keeping the law as the Pharisees thought was not God's true intention in the Old Testament. Thus, Jesus not only rebuked them but also cursed them harshly. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside but on the inside are full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Why did Jesus harshly rebuke the Pharisees, the religious leaders of Israel who tried to live according to the law? Of course, as Jesus said, they were hypocrites. They even made and followed the rules that were not in the law. But their hearts were still full of human sins. This is because the laws they kept did not make them holy. In addition, they were blind. God's true intention in speaking to his people in the Old Testament was to address their impossibility. That is why those who recognized the impossibility sought God's plan and grace. God wanted them to hide in God. However, the Pharisees were still immersed in outward religious practices while still being impossible on the inside and believed and taught as if the religious practices led them to the true path of holiness and sanctification. The blind lead the blind. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. That is why they were cursed by Jesus. They had to recognize that it is impossible to come to the place of salvation. But that was not the case. Even though the true Savior came, they could not see it because of their acts of faith. That is why they were blind and hypocrites. The meaning of holiness conveyed to us through the Bible is not that we can live a better life than yesterday. Rather, true sanctification is to thoroughly know that yesterday, today and tomorrow, we still lack and will always lack. It is the true meaning of sanctification, to confirm and reconfirm that we cannot live even for a single moment without the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells the story over and over again. That is why the Bible did not hide the incident where David who forgave Saul, despite the fact that he tried to kill him twice, had an adultery with a woman whose husband was alive and the incident in which he tried to slyly kill the husband. If the sanctification that the Bible aims for is progressing little by little to the history of Israel's life, such a scene of David who is remembered as Israel's holy warrior should not appear in the Bible. This is how David, who seemed to have the best personality in the Old Testament, discovered the true nature of his sinful human being and cried out to God. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David realized this through the Bathsheba incident. He realized that he had not forgiven Saul twice on his own. God did that. The Spirit of God protected him and gave him grace. It was all God's doing. David discovered his life had become less mature, not better. And he was now well aware of it. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, 
you will not despise. David realized that acts of faith would not draw him close to God. However, since the Pharisees did that and taught that to be the right way, they deserved Jesus' harsh cursing. In the end, the history of Israel ended with the record of the kings. Even though the Chronicles was recorded after and are also books of history, it reveals that the true Canaan is not this land, but Jesus Christ who will come as the Gospel. And the Book of Palms also reveals Jesus Christ, the true Savior, and the Book of Prophets is filled with the proclamation that God Himself will do what is impossible by humans because of their limitations. I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God. I will put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. I will give them singleness of heart and action, so that they will always fear me for their own good. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me, so that they will never turn away from me. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, and I will put my spirit in you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. I will put my spirit in you. I will cleanse them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the house of Israel. And Jesus Christ came as the way of salvation. God will make a righteous branch rise from David and make David the servant of God their king forever. That son is son who will surely fulfill God's zeal and will receive the suffering instead of the rebellious people of God. This is the true sanctification spoken of in the Bible. Knowing God and knowing ourselves is sanctification. Rather than maturing into a better version of ourselves through our efforts and diligence, it is about recognizing very deeply the reality of sin that remains within us and seeking God's grace more earnestly, relying on the power of the Holy Spirit and hiding in Jesus Christ. Through the process of sanctification, our pride does not grow but rather we are increasingly humbled and diminished. While God's love, the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit grow greater within us. That is why Paul did not go to a place where he was able to exalt himself more, but went to a place where he humbled himself even more. He discovered that the weaker and more humble he was, the greater God became. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Thus Paul was able to proclaim the following exhortation. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. They engaged in such self-examination and formed fellowships not for self-improvement or sanctification alone, but it was rather their way of struggling to prevent the regression of their faith. This is the sanctification the Bible talks about.